Welcome to this tutorial about Grass Valley Channel Composer. In this tutorial we'll go over the creation of a clip title template along with the clip title formats. So for this clip title we'll first have to add a new template. So on the project section I can go up to the new template button and add a new template to my project. And right click and rename it to HD clip title in. In this case we're going to use gradient plane for our background in combination with two text fields. So let's start off by adding the plane to our template. In order to do this I can go over to the add object library, go to plane and add a gradient plane. Now I can of course alter the gradient in order to give it a better result. So I can go over to materials, double click and go over to the gradient plasma and in the gradient plasma I can start altering my gradient and I can give it an angle of 90 degrees and alter the colors as well by clicking the gradient points now of course the next step is to alter the size of our plane so I can double click my plane and with width and height sliders at the top I can alter the size. So I'll go to, for instance set it to a size of seven, about 700 by say 200. One of the other things I can do is make rounded corners to this plane. So I can set the radius of course and over here you can directly see why we need to use the width and height values instead of altering our size like this. As you can see my corners will stretch because I'm scaling my plane instead of resizing it. So now that I've rounded corners around my gradient plane I can start adding my text fields. So I can go to add ob object again and in add object I can go to text and add a new text field. And this text field has an extra option called copy from transform gizmo which allows me to resize my text field on the stage and eventually reset the scaling and take over the native size of the text field. So in this case I can start resizing my text field and press the copy from transform gizmo and as you can see the grass valley text will be rescaled again to a native size. So I can start altering my font as well. I can set the size to 53. I'm fine with the current font I have and I can set the alignment. And for the alignment I can set a horizontal mode. And I have a few horizontal modes available. The most important ones are the auto fit and word wrap. The word wrap will wrap a word to a next line if it reaches the end of the text field. And the auto fit will make sure that the text will not exceed the text field and will always crop if it's bigger than the text field itself. So in this case I'm going to use the auto fit mode and I can show you the result of this just by adding some text. My text will start to crop to make sure it still fits within the text frame. So next step will be to go to the styling and well in this case I'm pretty happy with the color. So the next step is to add a second text field and we can just do this very easily by copying over the current one we've created. Just by pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl V on the keyboard. And on Mac this will be Command C and Command V. And now I have a second text field which I can move down with the arrow keys. And reposition. Now the next step is to add scene parameters to our text fields in order to eventually get the metadata from the database in order to fill our clip title in order to see which video clip is playing currently. In order to do this I double click my text field and I go to the top at the point where I can fill in my text and at this point with the triangle next to the text field I can say link to scene parameter and create a new scene parameter in this case for instance title. I have to do the same thing for my other text field, so I can double click that text field and do the same thing, triangle, link to scene parameter, and in this case it would be artist. 
Now of course we want to create an animation for this clip title as well. And the best way to do this is to group all the objects together and make an animation of the group itself. This is very easily done by selecting all the objects on the stage and pressing G on the keyboard. And now I have a group created of my clip title and I can start animating this clip title. So if I'm happy with this position where it's currently at, I can say for instance, I want to have this position at one second. I can add a new keyframe and at zero seconds it should be out of the screen. So I can move it out of the screen and add a new keyframe again. And this will be the result. I have some other options available for keyframes as well where I can create interpolation. Currently it's at a constant speed and I can also set it as an ease in or an ease out or an ease in and out or a step where with the step it will step from the first keyframe directly to the second at the time it hit, when it hits the second keyframe. So for instance with, with an ease out this would be the result. Now we'll move on in creating our clip title out template since our clip title in template is basically done. And for the clip title out we do exactly the same thing as I've done in the previous tutorials. Create a duplicate template of my clip title. So I can press the duplicate template button and rename my clip title to clip title out. And of course do the same thing as I've done with previous tutorials. Press the Select All Timeline Items button and go to Tools and press Reverse. And this is the result. The only thing that it will not reverse is the interpolation we've set in the clip title in. So currently my interpolation I've set, the ease out, is at the end keyframe. And it's only going to pick up the interpolation from the first keyframe. So we have to change the first keyframe in this case to ease in in order to recreate uh, the reverse of our animation. Now moving on to the format, I can go to project and add a new format to my project. I can rename it to CTL from clip title and I can start adding my clip title in and clip title out templates. Maybe alter the timing offset so I could set the first clip title in to an offset of say 10 seconds after the event has started and set the clip title out to 20 seconds after the event started in order to let it run for total duration of 10 seconds. But the only thing that is missing in this overview is we have to make a reference for the scene parameters to the metadata of the database. Because normally our clip title information will be stored in custom metadata along with the assets stored on the TXMM database. In order to make this reference I cannot go to right click and change parameter type since there is no overview here for a custom metadata field. But I have to import my custom metadata from the TXMM database. So if I go over to project assets and to metadata, I've already added an XML file with the custom metadata fields. If you want to do this yourself, you can go and click this button and you can browse to your hard drive and select an XML file that was created based on the asset type information gotten from the TXMM database. So what I can now do is easily select the artist field for instance and drag it from there onto my format and do the same thing for the track custom metadata field in this case. I will have to do it for both templates. So now eventually this will create a clip title where the information is gotten from the artist and the track metadata field inside the TXMM database and it will show the information stored in the asset itself.